starts up okay but then the glow plug immediately goes out and I get no crank so in the past when this is okay there's been one or two things that's happened there was a fuse in here I think it was a 5 amp fuse which is blown in the past I think that was it from memory, another 15, 15 amp SM for starter motor. And there as you see that's that's blown. Now I'm pretty sure I don't have a spare one. No, it's a 25, I'm not going to put that in because I know I've got an intermittent fault so do not want to be popping that. So what I'll also do is just check the main, I think there are 50 amp fuses in here. It looks okay. It's alright. Looks okay as well. Actually, that one's a spare anyway. Oh, it's a bit annoying. So, I have watched a, another YouTube video. And what they showed is that when you pull all of this off, sort of behind this grey panel, down low, down in, in that corner, you can actually get to the starter motor. So it's, you've, you've got to pull all of this out first. But when you get to that starter motor, the, the YouTube video that I'd watched showed that in there they, uh, there's, a, there's a cable that comes from the starter motor and it's got a perfect rub point on it. And this particular individual's had rubbed through and was causing it intermittent faults and that was very, very similar to, to what I'm having. So I think I'm gonna have to come back another day with my tools I start pulling all this lot apart and seeing where I get to. So the excavator down there is uh, is in pieces. I've taken the seat and um, part of the internals out. I had my, my intermittent fault came back and Friday night I managed to get away from work and just crack into that. But on Friday it was definitely not forecast to rain at all this weekend. So I've taken the seat out, left the seat outside. As you can see there's the seat, it's soaking wet now. A lot of the bits that got taken out. So the issue I've got are twofold. One, the intermittent electrical fault, which is a, a starter motor fuse blows. So I managed to get in here. Absolute pig of a job. So you can see, I mean. I could not understand, there's a cover cover plate here, could not understand why I could not get that cover plate off until, uh, until I realised there's an actual, that, that screw was holding the cover plate in. As you can see, that's, that, that screw there is actually behind this other piece. This can't move, it's fixed in place. It's just bizarre, bizarre bit of design. So I had to get a, a crowbar as you can see and sort of pull all that metal out of the way so I could get in under the screw. What I did find is there have been issues here in the past. Um, looks pretty ugly, huh? So that's obviously melted in the past and I'm guessing when you look closely at it, there's a bit of metal protruding there. So I'm guessing this is part of the, uh, part of the issue maybe a bit of earthing on this so I've brought some things to fix that I'll kind of wrap that up properly cut it off wrap it up properly terminate it properly so I'm, I'm guessing that was uh, that was earthing so yeah if you if you look at the camera in here 
have a look. There's a whole suite of terminations in there which have been done in the past with a similar issue, I'm guessing. So I'm hoping they did it correctly and it was just because this piece has been causing the problems. Touching somewhere as it swung around and may have potentially effed. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing here. Um, that's a starter motor and it was a starter motor fuse that was blowing and I've seen some electrical issues or some, some wiring that's not the best so it's going to lead me to conclude that that's where the issue is and uh, about as much as I can do at this stage but to get to to get to that was an absolute pain there's all sorts that you have to uh, take apart and then the other thing that I was looking to try and fix and resolve is as you can see the coolant leak and that comes in there I'm assuming so this is the uh, this is the pump we get air flowing out of here this is the air pump or the fan I'm assuming in here because we do have coolant pipe coming through there I'm assuming that within there is a, is a heat exchanger and this thing must be yeah there must be a leak within the pipework within here because you actually get a drip just down in this corner my next task is to try and work out how the heck I get to that. I have undone all the bolts, so this whole thing is loose. I think the next thing I have to do is disconnect, disconnect the controls so the whole thing can be lifted out of the way. And that was where I stopped on Friday. Stopped with a view of I'm getting well out of my depth. But the plan today was, uh, yeah, come get this up the hill so I can tackle this on another day. I can, it does actually still operate and I can still drive it, just sitting my butt there on the metal. Um, so I'm only going to carry a couple of logs and just drive it up the hill, so no real concerns there. So, okay, let's get this thing started and get, grab hold of a log and get it up the hill. And then I'll come back down, grab, um, yeah, grab some of these materials and that, some of the, uh, the parts and get them taken back up the hill as well. At least if I can get the seat out of the rain for the, the rest of the time it might, yeah, it's pretty wet. It might uh, might dry out in the week. Yeah, let's uh, grab a log and get up the hill. Hi, welcome back to the Rural Project. So if you can remember, I think in a previous video or a few days ago now, um, I was showing this excavator, I'd had it in pieces. Um, I'd taken off, taken off the seat, taken off this panel, taking off panels that were that were at the back behind the seat and I was trying to fix two issues one being a, a coolant leak and the second one being an intermittent electrical fault which resulted in the starter motor fuse blowing so pretty certain I have already there's already a video there of me fixing or finding the, the cause of the intermittent electrical fault so what I did with that cable um, with that wire I should say is I cut the end off that wire uh, wrapped it in electrical tape and then all the wires in that area were all enwrapped in protective um, a protective cover electrical tape together and then um, and then also sort of tie wrapped into place so nothing can come loose nothing can um, vibrate and rub on each other and since then I've had no more issues but it, it is you know it is intermittent so I'm hoping that was the issue and I fixed it but we shall see. The other issue that I was having was um, a leak and it was coming, you know, we were seeing a drip from sort of this area somewhere and that was uh, that was from the coolant system and within there is a, is a, heat, a heat exchanger and I'd got to the point where I stopped the other day and I was like ah, kind of at the limit of what I know next. The, my next move basically was to start pulling the electrics out of both controllers on the left and the right and the hydraulic pipes that come up into here as well pulling them out of the way and then so I could lift this this box off I've gone to the extent of taking these all these bolts out um, but until I actually disconnected this from the, the pipes that come in and the electrics that come in I won't be able to lift it out of the way what I did because I was feeling like I was reaching the limits of my skills I got a got a mechanic in and he, he had a look at this and Kind of tended to agree with me and said yeah it's 
once you can get into this, relatively quick and cheap fix, but getting there was going to be a, a job and a half. And then you ask the obvious question, do you actually need your heater? Can you survive without it? So this is a this is a farm excavator. I'm not working it every single day. The heater's nice, but if it's going to cost me a small fortune to get it repaired, I'm not too bothered about that. So what was going to be a a full day full day fix to get everything disconnected, fix it, and then get it all put back together again, ended up being a, a half hour fix. So the mechanic basically bypassed that heat exchanger. So what we have here, so obviously you've got the got the radiator radiator in here, upper connection, lower connection. That goes into here and we actually have a pipe coming out which goes down and around and then a one underneath there which goes down and around as well. So this so these two pipes lead to the heat exchanger. So they go down and around. When you get in underneath here, if you can see those those two pipes that go through there with with we've put bolts in the end and um, secured the bolts just so that those pipes don't fill with anything. Those obviously those bolts went there and the pipes continued through there and the uh, the coolant would flow through those two pipes into and out of the heat exchanger. So what the mechanic was able to do, and he said it's a fix they do pretty regular, get in there, loosen off both of those two hoses, and then as you can see up here, reconnect those two hoses together. So what I basically have is the two hoses coming along. I've got a, a an in and a return. You can see there. Hopefully, you can see that on my finger. That's those. That's the in and the out pipe. The supply and return. Both of those are connected together. So basically, the the, the coolant just flows through and around that pipe, and then goes without going to the heat exchanger. It actually goes back into the coolant system. That was literally a 10 minute fix. Rolled underneath there, disconnected the pipes, pushed the pipes onto their own fitting, back onto each other, tightened up the pipe clamps, tested it, job done. Um, and I run it for a good half an hour, there was no leaks. So uh, yeah, happy happy with that, with that fix and that bypass. That certainly helped, um, saved me a lot of money. Still got the coolant system, so sorry still got the aircon system operating so I do have uh, I do have aircon supply I just don't have any heat in winter but to be honest I've had this over a year and I've never used any of the uh, any of the heating ever so not really bothered too much about that so what that's going to allow me to do now is get this cover back on here because I'm not going to need access continuously like I did previously to keep topping up the radiator and uh, yeah jobs are good and so if you have a leak in your uh, in your coolant system, and the leak's showing in and around or underneath the seat, and you believe it's the the heat exchanger for your uh, for your heater in your cab. The cheap and quick fix is to actually just bypass it, and uh, showed you how to do it. So yeah, for me, I was happy with that. Hopefully, this video is going to be of some use to you, and also the video there about showing the showing the, the wire at the back of behind this seat that actually goes to the starter motor and the sort of rubbing and um, and issues that you can get there hopefully that's of use to you as well but we'll keep an eye on that hopefully our fingers crossed that's fixed the electrical issue it has certainly 100 percent fixed the coolant issue okay so if you enjoyed this video if this video was useful for you this video saved you some time and some money please click like and, uh, and let me know in the comments below how useful it was. Okay, thanks for watching.